Thank you, Abba Father. We worship your name. We exalt your name. One more time, help me look at somebody say happy Christmas this morning. Hallelujah. Look at somebody, tell the person happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas to you. Hallelujah. Are you wishing somebody happy Christmas this morning? Are you wishing somebody? You are not wishing somebody. You are not doing it with smile, with joy. Are you doing it with joy this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we want to bless you for bringing us to this wonderful Christmas. 25th of December last year we are here. And today we are here to appreciate you. Let your name be exalted in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated this morning quickly. Let's look at something very interesting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for the worship team, for that worship. The passion of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The passion of what? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The passion of Jesus Christ. The passion of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. The passion of Jesus Christ. Amen. We've been on this series for a while now. And what a blessed day to share on this note or on this topic. We started with what? We're talking about the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we looked at the person of Jesus. We looked at the peoples of Jesus. We have looked at the principle of Jesus. Yesterday we looked at what? The prosperity of Jesus. This morning we will look at what? The passion of Jesus. Then we have two more to go. Hallelujah. Amen. We look at the, uh, the preaching of Jesus. Then the people of Jesus. Glory be to God. But this morning we look at the passion of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Quickly this morning. What is passion? What is passion? Passion is a strong and intensive emotion compelling action. A strong and intensive emotion, feeling that compels one to action. Hallelujah. Glory be to what is passion? Passion is a strong feeling of excitement for something or about doing something. When there's a strong feeling of what? Excitement about something or about doing something. He say it's passion. Amen. In the secular, you hear it more. But in the kingdom of God, we use more of zeal. So zeal, wherever you hear zeal and passion is the same thing. In the secular, you hear passion. Be passionate about your vision. Be passionate about this. But in the kingdom of God, you hear more of what? Zeal. Let me let's look at let's look at John chapter number two quickly. John's gospel chapter number two. John's gospel chapter number two. Hallelujah. If you have it, say amen. Look at verse number 13. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and those and the money changers. And the changers of the money sitting, sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small courts, he drove them out of the what? The temple. And the sheep and the oxen and poured out the exchanger's money and overthrew their tables. Hallelujah. Verse 16. And said unto them that, the, that so those take these things, things, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. Verse 17. Everybody did. And his disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thy house has eaten me up. Do you hear that? Glory be to God. Amen. He came into the temple. He saw what was happening. He was so passionate about the temple of God. And he stepped in. He said, what is happening here? There was heavy business going on. Heavy business transaction going on in the temple. And what did he do? He, the Bible says he quickly made a whip outside. 
got into the temple, began to flog everybody. Flog everybody. Went to where they set the table, they set their market, buying and selling. Overturned everything. Scattered everything. Somebody say passion. What made him to do that? Passion. I said is what? It's a strong and a compelling emotion. It's a strong and, and what? And, and a strong and intensive emotion that compels action. Passion. The passion of Jesus Christ. It was so, Jesus was so passionate. Jesus was so passionate about the temple of God that he had to just abandon his messianic mission and began to scatter everywhere. The passion he had compelled him to take that action. And this is a whole message we look at in the year 2024. But let me quickly say something. We have already established that the temple of God represents three things. One, your body is the temple of God. That's why he said in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse 16 and I think 19, he said, don't you know that yeah, your body is what? The temple of God. So, you must, as a believer, understand that there are some transactions that should not take place in your body. So when you are sick, that transaction is not of God. You can employ the Christ in you to overturn the table of every sickness. Say amen this morning. Two, the church setting like this is a temple of God. That's why we admonish people, we encourage people, when you come to the house of God, there is a way you should behave. You must recognize a setting where two or three are gathered in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You must recognize that place as a temple and, and behave very well. Three, your house. Any house a believer is living has become the temple of God. Your house. One, your body. Two, the church setting. Two, the church setting. Three, what? The, your house. Your personal house. That's why as a Christian, it's not everything you bring into your house. It's not every uh, movie you watch in your house. Why? That house is the temple of God. It's not any kind of conversation you carry out there. It's not any kind of activity you carry. That's why when Jesus came in and saw the activity they were carrying on in the temple does not align with God's program for the temple. What did he do? He flushed them out. Hallelujah. Somebody said the passion of the Christ. Passion of Jesus Christ. Let's look at what the Bible says about this, 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 this morning. Let's look at Jesus and the passion. Go to Matthew's Gospel chapter number 9, verse 36. Matthew's Gospel. Flip your Bible. Matthew's Gospel chapter number 9, verse number 36. What did he say? Hallelujah. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with what? Compassion on them. Because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Do you hear that? He said compassion. What is passion? What is compassion? The same thing. Compassion is just compounded passion. I hear that saying? Passion in a multiplied form becomes what? Compassion. He saw the multitude he was so passionate about them. He was moved by passion because they were scattered as sheep without what? Shepherd. Passion. We are looking at Jesus and passion. Look at Matthew's Gospel chapter 15. Matthew's Gospel chapter number 15 verse 32 quickly. He said, when Jesus called his disciples unto him and he said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat and I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. When he did what? When he, he they continue with them, he, they continue with him three days. After they continue with them three days, glory be to continue with him three days, there was no what? Food. The Bible says he saw that they were hungry. He was moved by what? Passion. To make food available. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Glory be to God. Look at Mark's gospel chapter number 6. Mark's gospel chapter number 6 verse number 32. 32. 6, 32. Are you there? He said, And they departed into what? A desert place by the ship privately. Glory be to God. Continue the next day. And the people saw him departing 
and many knew him and ran hither out of the cities uh, outward outwent them and came together unto him look at verse number 34 and jesus when he came out saw much people and was moved with what compassion towards them because they were what a sheep not having shepherd and he began to teach them many things glory be to god glory be to god i said glory be to god amen he saw them scattered and he had compassion on them glory be to god and when he saw the, 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 them scattered he did what he had to find solution we're looking at the passion of jesus christ now having read these scriptures amen you can directly tell me what the passion of christ is what is the passion of jesus man humanity he saw them he saw them glory be to god he saw them he had compassion human beings hallelujah i said hallelujah i said hallelujah. the question is that why 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 is it that is it, jesus had compassion listen this morning human beings are the only creature that has the god's nature lions don't have god's nature tigers don't have god's nature that's why if you go back to the book of genesis he said let us make man in our what in our image and in our likeness in our image and in our likeness we let us make man to look like us and to act like us when he made lion he never said so hallelujah when he made tiger he never said so when he made snake he never said so but when he made man he said let us make man in our own image in our likeness remember clearly this morning there is a created man that's why you need to be very very careful there's a teaching going on i don't want to go into that this morning let me stay focused now there is there is the created man and there is the formed man in genesis he said and god said let us make man in our own way he said in the image of god he created them then by chapter number two what happened he said he took man from the dust of the earth are you gonna listen he took man from the dust of the earth and he made man hallelujah glory be to god he made man from the dust of the earth now when he made man from the dust of the earth what did he do he breathed into the nostril of man very important there is a made man there is a created man the created man is the spirit of man the made man is just the body and he took man from the earth now the question is that why did he not allow the created man to function god has placed a law if you read the bible he said the heavens even the heavens belong to god but the earth as he gave it to what to the sons of man there is a there is there is um there is a law and god does not break his law what is that law spirits are not permitted to function on earth so which means if the spirit is going to work glory be to god if the spirit is going to work they must pass through what the body so the formed man he took the formed man from where from the earth because he was made to live on earth that's eschatology message i don't want to go into the heaven we are preparing for is this earth but so that somebody say what is this pastor saying has he joined controversial pastors yes he said <laughs> He said, he will, I saw a sheep coming, a new what? A new heaven and a new earth. He called it the new Jerusalem. So man was not ordained to live in heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why as a child of God, maximize, maximize your time on earth. Do what? Maximize your time on earth. Well, let's, let's, let's move on this morning. Glory be to God. So he took, he made a man from the dust of the earth. He took, he breathed into the nostril of man. Why is it that Jesus was so passionate about man? 
man is the only person having the nature of God. There is a God factor in every human being. That is what? God, wait, no, irrespective of a religion. Whatever religion the person, that's why the, no religion on earth should promote destruction of another human being. Why? When you promote the destruction of another human being, you are, you are, you are going against the law of God. No matter what you preach, if you say your holy book promotes destruction of human being, then that book is not from God. Why God will not destroy himself? Church, I hear what I'm saying. No religion on earth should promote what? The destruction of another human being. Why? I may not be in the same religion with you, but as far as I'm a human being, I have a God factor in me. Church, are you getting me this morning? As far as the person is a human, it's not a chimpanzee. Are you going to say? Whether it's black, this superiority that we are white and we are black and we are yellow, every human being, whether it's black, whether it's yellow, whether it's in Africa, whether it's in Europe, wherever, whether it's in Asia, as far as it's a human being, he has what? He has a God factor. And that is the passion of Jesus about human beings. Hallelujah. Why was Jesus so passionate about human beings? Jesus, so, Jesus was so passionate about human beings because along the line, man got disconnected from the maker. Man got what? Disconnected from his maker, lost his position, and Jesus needed to come. He didn't come for trees. He didn't come for cars. He didn't come for goats. He didn't come for lions. He came for the sake of what? Humanity. The passion of Christ. Human beings are the passion of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. I say glory be to God. I say glory be to God. And because his passion is towards man, what happened? That's why he was able to relate with the small and the big, the young and the old, the tall and the short, the black and the white, the rich and the poor. If you watch it, he related with all class of human being. Why? He did not come for this and left this. He came for every human being. Whether you are rich, people like Zacchaeus, that the centurion, are you going to say? Or whether you are poor, like the widow. Who's, well, you know, the other time he gathered children, he was carrying them, playing with them. The disciples came and they were like, give, them, give the children to their mother. He said, no. Don't forbid the little children to come to me. He said, for what? Out of their mouth has God ordained praise. Glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. So, as man, you see, the man has been the passion of Christ. And the passion became even compassion when man failed. So, the heartbeat of God is what? Souls of men. It's a very brief talk this morning. The heartbeat of God is what? Souls of men. And that's why when he was living, he left us with two major assignments, which we call the great commandment and the great commission. The great commandment is what? Love. That is in Mark chapter number 12. If you read down somewhere, 30 something, 36, 37, 38, 40 to 40. When they gathered and they said, you know, they, they, they upheld the, the, the commandment of Moses. They held it with, in high esteem. They said, out of the ten commandments, which one is the greatest? They were waiting for him to give. He looked at them and laughed. He said, well, the, the greatest of all the commandments is what? Love the Lord with what? With all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. Even the second one is still the same thing. Love your neighbor and yourself. For on, on this commandment hangs what? All the law. Are you with me this morning? Then that is we have talked about love, which is the principle of Jesus Christ. Now, he said, when he was living, he said, all power in heaven and earth, on earth have been given to me. Go therefore and do what? Make disciples of all nations. In Mark's gospel chapter number 16, he said to them, do what? He said, go and preach everywhere. And they went preaching. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Christmas and Christmas have been misunderstood. Christmas for us, you know, the, the narrative or the journey have been on like this. 
and we are continuing in that line where we see Christmas as the only time to fix new here and visit this place go to amusement park fix buy new shirt buy new shoes all these things are fantastically fantabulous according to my friend fantastically good but one of the primary people who must know is that Jesus came forward for souls his so big is his passion is about souls and his passion should be our passion and he did not even come it was not even passionate he even gave us a commandment one of the greatest gifts we we'll give to God this season is what a soul to tell a soul about what the love of Christ to share with somebody about the love of Christ and I will give you before we go I will give you the cheapest we'll just talk to God in a short while I'll give you the cheapest means or the easiest means to do this technology has made it easy you can do it one on one physically glory be to God you can do it with your internet gadgets so instead of going to TikTok to see see the style of my hair why not do a video about the love of Christ and put it there for somebody are you hearing what I'm saying instead of just you dress up very fine because you bought new clothes and do the TikTok and post it why not go this morning and talk about take it the scripture John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish just just say something about that scripture and put it on TikTok for all your friends because there are so many of your friends there that don't know Christ. And the greatest gift to give to God this Christmas season is his soul. Let somebody hear about the love of God. That is the passion. And his passion should be our passion. His passion should be what? Our passion. Hallelujah. Why not go to your Facebook page? Today, that is Christmas, and do and say something on your Facebook page that talks about the love and the salvation of Christ. Just take a scripture that talks about and put it there and share it. Let somebody hear about Christ today. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. And remember what God said and what the scripture said. He said, Christ will not come back until this gospel is preached where all over the world. Somebody said, but there are churches everywhere. There are some people that have not heard about Christ. Too. There are some people that have not heard about the saving power, the loving power, the deliverance power, the healing power of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Why not go to your WhatsApp today and, 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 and put a message to all your friends about what? This, the, the love of Christ. The passion of Christ is human being. And if the person of Christ is human being, every one of us must learn and develop ourselves to be people person. Touch your neighbor say you must be a people person. Why? If you are not a people person, you can't reach the person. You can't impart the person. If you are always having issue with people, if you, are, you, don't, you, you, you hate people, you don't connect with people, look at how Jesus connected with people. Hallelujah. Look at how he connected with people. He connected with the young. He connected with the old. He connected with the small. He connected with the rich. He connected with the poor. Why the connection? They did the connection because of what? Because he wants their soul to return back to God. He wants their soul to receive and be saved. And if we are going to uh, disseminate the gospel, spread the gospel, we must love people. We must connect with people. I want you to make sure that before we enter 26th, use every available means you have today to share the love of God. Use your phone, use your iPad, use your palm top, use your whatever you have. Put something about Christ on your platform today and post it. Let somebody hear. Let somebody read it today. It could be the message somebody needs to hear to be saved. That thing you are going to post today. Hallelujah. And if you can, if you can do physically, it's not a sin. Put something. Go to your TikTok platform. Go to your Instagram platform. Go to your, your, your YouTube platform. Go to your uh, Twitter platform. T make use of all the platforms today and put something about the love 
of Christ. The passion of Christ is man, is humanity, the souls of man. That's why if it is if he is giving them food, is the food is not his primary target, is how to win them back to the kingdom. If he's healing their bodies, the healing is not the primary target. The healing is just a means to reach them and bring them to Christ. Whatever thing you see Christ doing, or whatever thing he did, he did do what? To bring the, because man has become a fallen nature. Glory be to God. Man has become what? A fallen nature. And today, it's my prayer that as we have seen the 25th of 2023, you will see the 25th of 2024. I thought that people came for Christmas service. Let me say what I said again. I said, as you have seen the 25th of 2023, you will see the 25th of 2024. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please, as you celebrate Christmas, please celebrate Christmas with somebody at the back of your mind. With a soul at the back of your mind. With a soul at the back of your mind. Why? The passion of Christ is not for things. The passion of Christ is for souls of men. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord keep you. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be I'm gonna be going through your, your platform today to see whether you, you share the gospel on your platform. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Hallelujah. Let's bless the name of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Just with those things and bless the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wave those things and bless the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wave those things and lift up and bless God. Lord, thank you. Thank you because you came because of me. And God, I receive grace to, to give a gift. The gift of the soul to your kingdom today. Wave those things and bless the name of Jesus. I receive the grace to be only the other king of glory. To give you a gift of a soul today. I receive the grace to give you Lord, Jehovah, a gift of a soul today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I receive Lord, Jehovah, grace Lord, Jehovah, to give you a gift of a soul in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Re kataleba shanta la kalabragadushkia. Are you telling God this morning, Lord, bra and I receive grace to give you a gift of a soul today in the name of our Lord Jesus. A gift of a soul today in the name of our Lord Jesus. A gift of a soul today. A karaba antaleka subra andalabashande gebregeduskia. I want you to pray for yourself. Lord, I have stood in your sanctuary to see the 25th of 2023. I will still stand in your sanctuary in December 2024. In the name of Jesus. Are you declaring that? In the, you will not be missing in 2024. You will not be missing as you have stood in the sanctuary of God to worship God in 2024. In 2023, you will be in the sanctuary of God. You will be strong. You will be healthy. You will be richer. You, you will be stronger. You will be full of wisdom. You will be full of inspiration. By the time you have been, you'll be celebrating the Christmas of 2024. By the time you'll be celebrating the Christmas of 2024. Lord, that, that everyone here, our friends online, you will be, you will be, you will be greater. You will be richer. You will be stronger. You will have made greater impact in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise this morning. We give you glory in the name of Jesus. Raise your right hand. Everyone stretch your hand towards the altar here. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for 25th and thank you for your people. Thank you for our friends online. Thank you for every family on site. Spirit of the living God, your passion is souls. And let that fire be stirred up in our heart to be consigned to be people persons lord you over to be passionate about the souls of men my father to be so winners in the kingdom in the name of our lord jesus christ lord i pray for them that nothing will sour their december nothing will sour this season for them nothing will sour their going out nothing will sour their coming in they will worship in your presence in 2023 they will worship in your presence in 2024 no one will die in the name of jesus christ they will fulfill their destinies in the precious name of our lord jesus i pray for you that as you go and celebrate may the lord cause his face to shine upon you in the name of jesus by this time 2024 you will be a thousand times stronger a thousand times richer a thousand times richer a thousand times 
times richer, a thousand times stronger, a thousand times doing more exploit for God. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you in Jesus' precious name. And the church will say, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God an offering quickly this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you praise. We worship you as we plant this seed. We thank you for financial intervention, financial visitation in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated as you cast us as you cast us seed. Now let's remember that um, tomorrow our the, our next meeting will be on Wednesday. Hallelujah. On what? On Wednesday morning. Command your morning. Now that command your morning is going to be time for to begin to speak.